50. I'm going to hit one after that. No, we didn't. That was last week. Hmm. Okay, well, I just don't trust you anymore, as you know, okay. as far as numbers go. So, and welcome to episode 51 or 52. I'll go with 51 because um, we record this normally at Andrew's house, so we'll say that it's his word. Um, 51. We're doing episode 51 from the car again. Yeah. Why are we doing episode 51 from the car, Andrew? I don't know. Is it because Brad drives a bunch of crap cans? That's possible. But, I mean, we decided to do it from the car anyway, so it kind of worked out. Just at a different time than we had established it was going to work out. Yes. Um, so, I drive a lot of crappy cars. Um, wonderfully crappy cars. Not crappy in a, in a bad way. Um, and... Andrew had to pick me up at work because this morning my least crappy crappy car and the only one at my house currently that I had access to that is registered did not start. The uh, much maligned Silverado pickup truck that I speak about from time to time, the 05. So it's supposed to be my reliable daily driver um, let me down to try to come to work this morning. So thanks to Andrew for coming to work to pick me up at the end of the day. Oh, well, it's because I'm off this week because this is the last podcast before Andrew's wedding. Before my wedding, yes. And actually, we didn't have a Monday episode this week because just too busy, just too busy with wedding things. So, and I don't think anybody wants to listen to a solo podcast of just me. Um, so, uh, thank you for agreeing with that so fast, <laughs> Andrew. So, Andrew picked me How up at work. Do? I don't know. And he's going to bring me down to Salem, where he's going to loan me um, his Mon eighty nine Montero. Uh, for the next day or two until my truck is fixed. So, I don't know what's wrong with my truck, but I'm currently working at a Chevrolet dealer. So, conveniently enough, I brought it there this morning and uh, have them look at it and figure it out. It wouldn't start. It was cranking over. Um, I think it's a voltage issue. Not that there's not enough voltage to crank it over, but not enough voltage to crank it over whilst firing the injectors. Yeah. So, it didn't seem to want to start. Um until I just drained the battery dead and then whatever. So after hooking a second battery up to it and priming the fuel so I got a little extra fuel in it, it seemed to start right up. Well, not start right up, but eventually cranked over to life. So, But now it won't start again, so who knows what's going on. So it's I'll throw that drain. out later. What's that? Get some sort of drain on it. Yeah, some sort of drain. It seems to be charging when I'm driving, but not any other time like it's supposed to so I don't think it's the alternator it's brand new I don't think it's the batteries they're less than six months old so it's something else is happening to the vehicle so we'll get to the bottom of it and we'll figure it out but we're in Andrew's Galant VR4 yep um, what's that knocking noise that is the sway bar mount that when I did the steering rack I replaced the sway bar bushings and I think I cross started one of the bolts and it finally pulled itself out Ah, so which yeah, is loose, super, loose super annoying wire. because it's in a really hard spot to get the bolt in and also it's going to be a really hard spot to tap it. So, ah. And I changed the oil in the other day and I completely forgot while I was on the lift to look at it. But it's just as soon as you have any change in the road surface, it just clunks. Yeah, it's a, it sounds scary that it is then. This way. Yes, you do. Yeah, it's it's only the sway bar that's loose. Okay. It's nothing else in the suspension. Well, that's good to know, as I'm driving down the road with you. <laughs> but, anyway, uh, Project Car Updates. Do you have anything at all, Andrew, for this week? Uh, we missed one episode, so... Well, that's I... I did the oil change on this, finally. I meant to change the oil in the Montero. I didn't do that. The 99 or the 89? 99. Okay. Yeah, the 89 has a radiator coming. Which I will replace for you as payment for... Um, using it for a few days. Yeah, we're gonna, that won't be an issue. We're going to take back roads home because it's a parking lot. Oh, I'm sure it is. It usually is. Yeah. Especially down at PPD Salem area. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'll do that radiator for you when that comes in. Any other project car updates on your end? Not really. Uh, not true. No. Didn't you work on Jordan's car again? <laughs> ah, well, who's the the bridge? Uh, yeah. We actually, yeah, we did. So we worked on the, we finally had a chance to work on the Rally Cross STI. Yep, the exhaust issue, right? Yeah, because he needed to get an inspection sticker. Uh, yes. He was like way overdue in New Hampshire, and then he went on his long odyssey. So we put it on the back burner, but we want to go rally crossing the weekend after my wedding. 
so we took the entire exhaust off, like we sort of talked about last episode. Yep. And uh, my dad was around. Now, he can't weld because he has a pacemaker. Right. So he can't like, use welding or any kind of microwave. Yeah, super high voltage. So yeah. Uh, and no, no exhaust system is worth your dad's life. So <laughs> we're not going to make him weld anything. So he gave me the five minute primer, and then I went to town on it, and uh, it came out all right. I it mean, was, for a first time welding, I was pretty impressed. It, yeah, it was, it was all right. I had a, our uh, former guest Jeremy gave me a couple tips after he saw the pictures. So yeah, about temperature ranges and stuff. Yeah, and a little, little different pattern to it. But so I'll do that next time. And. Uh, but it broke right at the bracket on the downpipe. It split, like, basically where it flexed the pipe. Okay, so it's the most stress, probably. Yep. So we filled, it was a bit of a gap, so we filled it in with a um, coat hanger. Okay. That we took the plastic coating off. Just melted it down? Yep. That's and cool. Because, you know, welding, you can't create metal from air. Right, you had to have a filler metal. So then we... Like basically filled it in with that, and then there's a smaller little uh, crack on the other side of the bracket. Filled that in, and we were like, "Yep, I think we got all the holes." Bolted it back up, and it was nice and well. The exhaust is loud because it's an aftermarket exhaust, but the yeah. the whistling or like the puffing noise was, was gone. gone. It was gone. Yep. So I heard he said today he took it for a sticker and it got a sticker. So bonus. We're good to go. So your first time welding had actually good results. Yes, that's good. Um, exhaust is... Uh, it looks at least as good, if not better, than my weld would have looked, and it wouldn't be my first time welding, so yeah. take that as you will. Okay. Well, it was it was low, like, um, low risk to do the exhaust, because... It was already broken. It was already broken. It could be replaced, like, just that piece. Yep. Or we could try to weld it and learn something and save a few bucks, so... Which you did. Yep. Unfortunately, I wasn't there for this. I had other stuff going on that day, but... Um, I'm glad I wasn't because now you welded your first thing because otherwise I probably would have welded it. So now I'm ready to weld a bunch of other stuff. So it's that restoring a car from scratch. Yep, that's what I said. Bring uh, us your barn finds. Next thing, bodywork. Yeah, there's a, there's a big learning uh, curve between using a coat hanger to fill an exhaust and making a flat panel for a car. But yeah, it's, uh, them. Uh, yeah, you're definitely you're definitely on the right path. So that's good. But I just like as far as. Uh, the Montero needs sliders, and those have to be welded on, so... Those are actually probably easier to learn on because they're much thicker metal. Yeah, they'll be very thick metal, and the yeah. frame is thick, so probably you need more heat then. A lot more heat, yeah, yeah, I'm sure. But you'll also need a slower wire speed, and uh, you won't be using any kind of filler material. You'll be using the wire in the welder and the gas to, to make oh, the two go you together. Want it, you want it slower and hotter? Yeah. Yeah, you give it more time to burn in. Um, and you're also doing a 90-degree bend... Pretty much, yeah. But not a bend, but like a, a, a like a butt weld almost. You're gonna weld the flat steel to the flat steel, yeah. And it's probably pretty thick. It's probably you know, eighth of inch thick steel metal. Can I go the right way on 133? Yep, you're totally fine. Go west. Yep. Oh yeah. Um, yep. Right where I am. Yeah, request JT Farnham's. Yep. Which is if you're ever in the area. It's a beautiful area. Yeah. yeah. If you're up JT JT Farnham's is the far superior. Um, fried seafood joint to the one everybody goes to down the street called Woodman's. Yeah. Actually, if you've ever seen the movie um, Grown Ups, the uh, I Want to Get Chocolate Wasted scene is actually filmed at Woodman's. Yeah. It's a very famous uh, fried seafood place, but it pales in comparison to J.T. Farnham's down the street. Little, little local insight right there. Yeah, they're all like, there's all like salt marsh bogs are driving through here. Yep, on both sides, which is why our cars are always rusty. Yeah. <laughs> We're like driving through salt air all the time. Yeah. And then uh, we go by this little I'll see the name of the restaurant we go by. It's really good. Which one we go by? It's the one down by here, like right in the downtown area. Um, very localized conversation here, but the one across from Woodman's? Well, no, if you're visiting here and you take... Yeah, we're in Essex, Massachusetts, for yeah. everybody who's asking. Yeah. It's a, it's a you, beautiful little seaside town to come visit. If you come to the Boston area and you drive up like Route 1, Route 1A, up through Beverly, yep. you take, now we're on Route 133. It's a nice scenic drive from here. It's just just don't try to go to work. Essex, uh, Essex Coastal Scenic Byway is the name of the, the name of the road. Yeah, I think of Tom Shea's restaurant. No. Okay. Well, I'm gonna have to keep guessing because it's the only one that's right there. No, okay. it's one of the newer ones. Oh, okay. I haven't been to any of the newer ones yet. So. Um, anyway, 
So what were we talking about? Oh, J60. Um, we're, we're a little bit ADD here. We see cars. Uh, CK Pearls? Uh, yeah, this... Well, this place is good. Shays. That's Tom Shays. That's what right, I was talking okay. about. Oh, it's called Shays oh, now. Oh, CK Pearls. Used to, yes. used to be Tom Shays. CK Pearl. Okay. I've not eaten there yet. Stiff and I had brunch there one day. They have a water view deck. Yep. Next up, there's also a, um, less importantly, um, the Essex Wine Exchange yep. has an amazing craft beer selection. That's right here on the same road. But anyway, enough localized talk about 133. Uh, great road. Come up and visit the area and uh, let us know you're here and we'll show you where to go. <laughs> yeah. Um, what were we talking about? Project cars, Subarus. Exhaust is fixed. Yep. Got a sticker. Uh, uh, we, I helped Jordan change the oil in the exterior because he put like 7,000 miles on the truck. Yeah, probably to have to use the oil. Yeah. Should have changed it probably halfway through his trip. I think he did. Uh, um, Salem, yeah, take a left. Yeah. Um, another word of progress that I heard today. Yeah. I spoke to Joe, our other friend of the Subaru, that we did the exhaust valve in. Yeah. Um, he brought it to a shop that had a smoke machine yeah. to find his evap leak. Yeah. Because we couldn't figure out where the evap leak was without a smoke, machine. a smoke machine. Right. Uh, it turns out his filler neck was rusted. That checks out. Which is pretty common. Yeah. Um, so he's got a, a new filler neck put in it so he can also get a sticker. Okay. Well, I so, will have to check the blue WRX I bought. Also has an evap code for uh, it says actually says loose gas cap on the code reader, but so it's probably the same thing. That's what his code said. Yeah, so he's got a new filler neck to put in that now. I don't know. If, I don't know if they're just gonna do it at the shop while it's there, or if we're gonna do that later on. I didn't get that far in the conversation, but it's not too bad to do. No, it's not too bad. Other than the fact that I know that where it mounts to the body is pretty rusty. Yep. So um, again. As we talk about driving through the salt marsh here in Essex, that's part of the reason we live in a salty area. It's not only winter time, but it's coastal, so we get. That's uh, a really common thing around here: is phone necks rust out. Yeah, well, because they get a lot of moisture in them too. Yeah. Because especially the tank starts to get low, and you know the temperature swings so much here, and the air is so humid all the time. We get most you get moisture inside of it, and then if the outside is not coated well enough, it gets the surface salt and rust and yeah. salt air and stuff. Uh, yeah, it's no good. Man, your windshield is dirty, Andrew. It's very dirty. Yeah. Um, I thought I'm driving, so it doesn't matter, but that helps a little bit. Um, so project updates on my end, um, my truck is broken. Yeah. <laughs> down, down date? Yeah, another down date. Like always, another down date for from Brad on his project cars. Um, I have no other ones right now. Um, that's pretty much it. I uh, just got a lot of other stuff going on and haven't had much time to do... A lot of fun car stuff. Um, I was looking at the Glant here, and I was like, "Oh yeah, I have that tank I have to replace to get the fuel tank." the fuel tank, yeah. yeah. So I don't know how many of our fans listen to other automotive podcasts. Probably quite a bit of them. Yeah. But I was listening to, um, I think I was listening to the Clutch Kick podcast today, yeah. uh, who actually mentioned us the other day. So certainly good to mention them again. Yeah. Um, and they were making fun of our former guest Cam, yeah. because he has like twelve cars, and one day had to get a ride home from work. Yeah. And uh, I realize right now that he and I are probably pretty similar because I have a large number of cars, and here you are picking me up from work. That's right. So Cam from Camden Tubbs, uh, I feel your pain based on that conversation as well. Uh, your gas tank story reminded me of that because he's stuck up with a gas tank in his BMW uh, that he's been kicking around for probably as long as you've had yours kicking around and not doing it. So um, Yeah, but mine's not leaking. It's just... I don't think his is leaking either. It's just rusty on top, and he wants to change it. I just don't like the way it looks. Right, because somebody, the former owner of this car, the Galant, put a deep sump in it, right? Yeah. So he had, like, A&N fittings and big filters because it was a drag car. Drag car. Yeah. So, yeah, you've saved it, Andrew, to not be a drag car anymore. Hold it, like, over here. Maybe. Sorry. This is kind of an experiment with the audio. Hopefully it comes out good. Yeah. Um, so do we, I don't have much progress on project cars. Uh, we do have a funny car-related story. You want to tell a story about uh, Sunday night? Oh, yeah, yeah, That was a pretty good one. <laughs> and I'm sure that that particular person uh, wants us to tell that story because he's like, I'm going to wind up on your podcast now, aren't I? <laughs> yeah. We, we don't have to say who it is. We'll just say we ran into someone. We ran so, into a friend who was having a wonderful uh, evening. All right. So we went to Boston, actually, to catch uh, We Enjoy My Brother, My Brother and Me. Another podcast you should listen to. It's a really funny podcast. Yeah, not I mean, car related and not for children. Huge I mean, a huge following, like yeah. comedy podcasts, but regardless. Well, put it this way, they, we went to a live showing of it, and they sold out the Wilbur Theater in Boston for yes. two shows. Yeah. So they got a pretty good following. 
They're way, way bigger than anything we'd ever attempt to be because we're not a comedy podcast. No. So we were leaving it, and we're in this huge crowd, and there's this one guy walking against the crowd, and I didn't see him, but Stephanie and Brad saw him, and they recognized him. Kind of recognized him. I was like, I think that's, is that? So he like said his name, and he turned around, and like, hey, it's you. And we started talking to him. We quickly realized he had had, um, he had partaken in the libations of the area. Yeah. Heavily. He had quite a few, um, frosty beverages. Yeah. So, he was definitely not in a position to be driving a car. So, but he, he wasn't. He didn't really plan to drive a car either. He just couldn't right. remember where he parked it. He wanted to make sure the car was okay. Right. He was going to take an Uber back to his house and come get the car later. But he went back to the car to get some stuff out of it and couldn't remember where the car was. Yes. <laughs> so, this is just outside the Wilbur Theater near Chinatown in Boston. It's near Boston Common. Yeah. Which we were parked in Boston Common. Yeah. Um... So we're like, all right. So we're talking to him. We're trying to get some information out of him. He's kind of remembering. He's like, well, it could be here, here, here. We're like, all right. Well, we did like a little loop, a little lap of the block and nothing. So I was like, all right, let's head back to our car. We'll get in our car and we'll drive around for like, we'll give it like a half hour or so. Yeah, if we don't find it, we're just going to bring you home. Yeah. Because at this point, it was like 1130 at night on a Sunday. Yeah. yeah, we'll do some laps and where you think you might have parked it, we'll look for your car. It's be much faster than walking around randomly. And it was also cold out. I don't know if it was cold. It was, it was cold for me. Andrew thinks it's cold when it's 52 degrees out. It was probably close to that. So it wasn't cold, but it wasn't it wasn't hot either. But um, So, yeah, so we drive around. We go to the parking garage. He goes, you know, I remember I have sometimes parked in the parking garage in Chinatown. And maybe it's there. So we drive to the parking garage in Chinatown. Now, we don't drive in the parking garage because you can't drive in and drive out for free. You have to pay to park. Yeah. Even if you're there for, like, eight seconds. So we, Andrew live parks out front, and he and Stephanie stay in the Outlander. And uh, our nameless friend of mine and of ours and I run into the parking garage. We got a couple weird looks from some people downstairs when we walked in. Yeah. Um, and we realized when we got to the parking levels that all the parking spots were taped off with caution tape. <laughs> so that's why we got weird looks when we walked in. And obviously his car was not in that parking garage. We walked in with a giant crime scene that happened in the parking garage. Um... So the car wasn't there. So we continue to drive. Now, he thinks he might have parked his car in South Boston at this point. Oh, sorry, the Seaport District. Yeah. So the Seaport District... Because that's where he started the night. Right. And before he got drunk, he moved the car he thought he might have. Yeah, so he didn't have to pay extra for this parking lot it was in before. Correct. He's like, I know I parked at Seaport originally. He's like, and then I think I moved it, but I don't remember, but I would have moved it before I was drunk. Yeah. So, I might have moved it, but I don't, I'm not sure. He goes, or it was stolen, or it was towed. So, I, he called the Boston police to report his car missing. Um, to which they quickly saw through the situation. I'm sure it was some salty Boston cop. Yeah. He was like, listen, you, fucking, listen, you, like, lo- you, you lost your car, you fucking moron. Yeah, like, you're drunk. You shouldn't be driving anyways. It's yeah. a good thing you lost your car. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, I guess he had, like, a yelling match with a police officer on the phone uh, about where his car was because the police wouldn't send anybody out to find his car. Now, the police wouldn't find anybody, send anybody out to find a person at this point because the car had only been missing for, like, an hour. Yeah. So, um, they certainly are not going to look for a car if they wouldn't look for a person. No. So, we decided we were going to continue to drive looking for his car. Um, long story short, we found his car. Totally safe. Parked on the side of the road. Not an issue at all. But it was, like five to six blocks from where we ran into him. It was a good distance. He'd walked at least 30 minutes. Yeah. Um, but we found it was safe. He obviously had not been drunk when he parked it because it was parallel parked between two cars nicely evenly against the curb. Everything was good. Um, so I drove him, drove his car home, yeah. took him home with the car, and then you followed and picked me up at the house. But yeah. um, long story short, don't drive into Boston if you plan on getting annihilated. <laughs> and yeah. don't forget where you parked your car. And or it, have your phone charged up so you can have uh, an Uber ride. An Uber ride, yeah. It's the other problem. His phone had died, so he couldn't call an Uber. So he's trying. That's why he was trying to get back to his car. Yeah. He's trying to get back to his car to charge his phone to get an Uber back to his house. Yeah. That's what. That's what the story was. So, anyway, it was a pretty funny, pretty funny moment. It was a person we hadn't hung out with in 
probably six months to a year. But, so it was funny just to run into him, of all people, in downtown Boston by then, himself. Like, randomly, two weeks earlier, I ran into his brother when we were out getting breakfast. That's true, too. Days, so. That was less randomly, because you were closer where they live. Yeah. But still. Well, but, uh, I guess there's a theory that, well, statistically, things aren't really that random, because it's such a small city. Boston? Yeah. And, like, it's pretty good odds you're going to run into somebody you know city of Boston. I don't know how many people day. were in the Wilbur Theater. I don't know what the capacity is, but it was a sold-out show, so it was full. Yeah. And that entire crowd was crossing the street when he walked right by us. So, the fact that he walked right by us, I still think is a pretty good coincidence. I feel like it was like maybe 1,500 people? At least. I think it might have been closer to 2,000. 2000? Whatever the capacity of the Wilbur Theater is, it's a lot of freaking people. It's a good-sized theater. It's not yeah. a super big theater. The place is packed, so... Yeah. Uh, it was a good time, though, and if you don't listen to my brother, my brother and me's podcast, you should, yeah. um, after you're done listening to your car podcast for the week, yeah. uh, because they're pretty damn it's hysterical. Interesting, I, it was interesting to see a podcast done live, too. Yeah, from the, from the, other, the other perspective. It's, yeah. They're a little more audience participation, but they were uh, still it was very well, they're, entertaining. They're also just very funny and very quick-witted, and some guy tried to push his podcast while he's asking a oh question. Oh my god, that was and funny. And they just ripped on him. It was awesome. Yeah, they do a listener question portion of the, of the show. He's like, hey, uh, you can listen to so-and-so podcast. So, and there, there's like, Boo. And the whole crowd went, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so that was pretty good. But yeah, that was a pretty good show. Um, any other non-car related news that we need to talk about this week? It's going to be probably a pretty short episode because we've been so busy with wedding stuff and other life things and we're just trying to get, get through the day here. And yeah, I think we'll just do... Uh, We'll just have this one episode. Yeah, it won't be two episodes this week uh, just because of think, life. Think of some listener questions. I'll post. We'll do some next week. Yeah, for and, a Sunday recording, right? Uh, Are you going to be we gonna be recording Sunday? No. Right, because you're getting married on Saturday. That would yeah. be a horrible idea. Yeah. Sorry, Stephanie. Um, no. So we'll probably record sometime next week uh, for Wednesday. Time. So there won't be a Monday episode next week either. No. no so no. Usual time and... Uh, Stop with your big push bar there. Yeah, he didn't have to. He's got a push bar. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so we'll, re- we'll re-record again for our next Thursday's episode. So this will be a little in-between episode for this Thursday. Next Thursday, we'll have a regular full episode back again. Um, because Andrew had to go and get married, and there are very few things that are more important than a podcast, but I guess marriage is one of them. So we'll let him slide. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we're just doing it for Stephanie. So we don't want to take her off too bad. Uh, so yeah, Andrew's getting married this Saturday. So wish him well. Um, I won't uh, blow up a spot of where you're getting married. So I don't have anybody showing up, <laughs> crashing your wedding. Well, but it should be a pretty good time. It's in Salem. Yes, it is in Salem at a place with a bar. So we're all gonna have a good time. And uh, it's mildly car themed. It is. Each table has a car emblem, right? Yes. Any other car themes gonna happen at the wedding? much it, I think. Yeah. Yeah, so each table will have the emblem from a car as the name of the table, so somebody will be sitting at the, you know, um, Stingray table. Yeah. So it's a lot of old, like, 60s car emblems that um, my father had lying around the garage, pretty much, that we used to mark, denote the people's different tables, so. I'm trying to think of anything else that had going on. Not much. It's been kind of a down week. We haven't done any shows or done anything. So we had no uh, no car related stuff because marriage takes you know weddings are a very <laughs> busy time. Yeah. And you have family coming from out, here from out of town too. So, but uh, yeah. So I don't want to bore everybody with this stuff. Trying to figure out what to talk about. So we're gonna cut this one short. I think. Oh, we just, I mean, oh, where are we going? Twenty five minutes. I mean, that must be the same FJ. It's not the same FJ. No. The other FJ was blue. We just passed two FJ sixties on the way home. I thought they were both blue. No, that was more gray. The other one was more darker blue. That's pretty wild, actually. Yeah. Like I had an FJ60 and a K5, not a K5 Blazer, a um, earlier Blazer, like a 72 Blazer convertible. Yeah. That's pretty sweet. Neither of them look money, though, so I guess they don't go off the road very much. You know, but anyway, nobody listens and cares about that either. Uh, what were you going to say, Andrew, before you saw the FJ? Oh, we're just driving in the quad. I mean, it's a pretty fun car. Hopefully, you can hear it. Yeah, hopefully. It's the car in front of us so you can hear the exhaust sound. No, it's fine. 
Um, anyway, sorry guys, not much of an episode planned this week, but we'll be back to the regular schedule next week. Um, as always, find the podcast at Auto Off Topic Podcast on Facebook and Auto Off Topic on Instagram. Andrew, where can they find you? you can find me at uh, Race and Anger on Instagram. And my Instagram, as always, is T S I S S three five zero. And we're gonna stop for the train here. Yeah. <laughs> Behind an I three. But uh, can uh, keep the cars analog. Good night. <laughs>